Well, good Wednesday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great hump day, and I hope you're getting over the hump. Uh, in about three hours from now, I'll be on the the uh, be on a stream, of course, with Dan Salio. Don't know what he's going to be beating me over the head with right now. Um, but we'll definitely be talking about Cowboys, Eagles, and so on and see if Philly 500 shows up or not. Be that as it may, um, I want to talk about the rumors that we're hearing. Uh, my man Rome last night I was talking about this, as well as Dak Attack was talking about this as well. And I don't know if there's any validity to this or not, or if this is just one of those things, you know, one of the off-season stories that, that pop up. But allegedly, we're hearing some rumors that the Cowboys may be bringing in on Friday Michael Thomas, wide receiver from the Saints. And this is one of those cases where that's a name you know because Michael Thomas, you know, for some years was incredible. I mean, you think about 2016, he had 1,137 yards. Uh, you think about 2017, had 1,245. 2018, 1,405. And 2019, 1,725 yards and was an absolute positive beast, okay? That Michael Thomas, I don't think exists anymore. That Michael Thomas has been missing in action and injured um, and is looking for a job right now. Um, also, we're hearing about Justin Simmons. Now, this is interesting with Justin Simmons because we saw Justin Simmons wearing the upside-down Dallas hat, you know, logo, the upside-down on it, um, at his camp this past week um so you know who knows if this is true or not um you know as they always say that you should be doing due diligence on everything that you on, on everybody that's out there and we hear stephen jones say that player acquisition is a 365 day a year job and i dare say as we get ready to start training camp in this season of my off season of my discontent it would behoove the Cowboys to do something to spark some extra interest from Cowboy fans because this has been the most down that I've ever seen the Dallas Cowboys fan base. Now, here's the thing that's interesting because I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, shit, you know, since 2020, Michael Thomas has just been ass-ass. I mean, 2020, he played in uh, seven games, 438 yards. No big deal. Zero touchdowns. 2021, missed the season with an injured ankle. Gone. 2022, played in three games, 171 yards. And, of course, last year, played in seven games, 448 yards. So you're looking at that and saying, man, that's not real good. But here's the case that I'll make for this. Um... I want you to think about this for a second. He had seven games last year and got 448 yards. Right? That doesn't sound like much. But let's say he can play a full season. As opposed to Michael Gallup, who had about 448 yards. And I think he played in just about every game last year. That alone is an improvement. But here's the, here's, here's the thing. Again, I don't know if there's anything to the rumors and things, but this is the type of move that the Cowboys would make because it's a value. You know, we got, we got a guy coming off of injuries and things and, and so on, and we got him cheap because he's trying to get on a roster. I'm going to give you another case. Even though Dan Salio last week said to me that Dak Prescott doesn't make anybody better. Let me talk about Randall Cobb. Let's put this up on the board here. See, this is one of those cases where when the Cowboys signed Randall Cobb, I can't think that too many people were really like, oh, my God, we got Randall Cobb. Because much like uh, Michael Thomas, Randall Cobb in 2014 was a beast. 12,087 yards. That's a great season. That's an incredible season. The next year, 2015, 829 yards, six TDs. Mm, uh, 
not not quite as good, but still really good. Now remember, he had Aaron Rodgers thrown to him, the bad man. The next year wasn't real good. He dropped down to 610 yards in 13 games. Hmm. The following year, more games, only 653 yards. So you saw his production literally going off a cliff. The next year, nine games, only 383 yards. And that's where Green Bay was like, yeah, this guy, he, he, he's, he's done. Stick a fork in him, right? Lo and behold, the Cowboys pick him up dirt cheap. <laughs> that value add, that value add for the Cowboys. And lo and behold... Here it is with a garbage-ass quarterback, as they say, Dak Prescott. He has the best season in 2019 that he's had since 2015. You see that, right? You see where he's literally dropped in production consistently for four years. He gets with the Dallas Cowboys offense, and all of a sudden, more than doubles his yardage. He played so well that he ended up getting a two-year, $26 million deal from the Houston Texans. With Deshaun Watson, a guy people were saying is better than Dak Prescott, throwing to him, and he goes back downhill. He literally went from 15.1 yards per reception down to 11.6. And if that wasn't enough for you, He ended up leaving the Houston Texans and went back to Aaron Rodgers, who's supposedly the best in the business. The best of the business, it still got even worse. So you can sit here and look and say, well, wait a minute. He turned his career around, got himself some more money, and extended his career by coming to the Cowboys and having Dak Prescott throw to him. What if the Dallas Cowboys do bring in Michael Thomas and Michael Thomas even – even if it looked look this way, Michael Thomas, six foot three, big target. Dak likes big targets. Okay. If he's your number three wide receiver and let's suppose he's splitting time, of course, with Jalen Tolbert and mentoring him and so on. And he just plays the way he did last year because his success rate last year on catches was 70.8%. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong person. Michael Thomas. Let me go back to Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas with the 448 yards. His success rate was 64. Not fantastic. But I'm going to throw one more curveball at you guys. Because here's the other thing that's interesting. When he had his last monster season, which was 2019, you know who his quarterback was for 11 of those games? Drew Brees and Teddy Bridgewater. 2020, then things started going downhill. Tyson Hill started starting more of those games. 2021, he didn't play. 2022, he had Jameis Winston for three games and Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton throwing to him for 2022. And 23, He had Derek Carr. So judging him solely, I get it. He's had injuries and things like that. And some of those injuries, I believe, were, I really just don't want to play with Andy Dalton in 22. There was a whole conspiracy theory that a lot of the players were like sick of Andy Dalton and wanted Jameis Winston to play. Be that as it may, you can definitely see if he's on the Cowboys with Dak Prescott, his numbers will increase exponentially because of that offense. If he's out there on the field with Brandon Cooks and C.D. Lamb, with that being able to spread and Jake Ferguson, his numbers could be very, very good. Maybe that you get him for seven, 800 yards. If you get seven, 800 yards out of him, along with Brandon Cooks and C.D. Lamb, you are really going to be able to stretch this field out and stress out defenses, especially with its height. So I don't know if there's anything to this rumor. I'm just trying to make the case to you why it could be a positive move. It's not the, you know, well, it is actually kind of a sexy move because you think of the name 
and you think of what he was a few years ago. And um, I'm betting that he could definitely do some, definitely could help our team. So we'll see if there's anything to this. And as always, you know I appreciate you guys, and I will see you soon. Peace.